Gute! In today's technical walkthrough, I would like to show you how you add voice control to your Home Assistant controlled smart home using Microsoft's Voice Assistant and their skill Home Assistant. So, let's go! Gute! Hacky, techy, nerd stuff. Open voice enthusiast. Open voice, open future. But before going into the tech, Louis from Everything Smart Home channel made recently a great video where he showed you how to add voice control to Home Assistant using Raspi. And if you do not know Raspi, it's an open source, fully offline running voice assistant made by the great Michael Hansen. I will link Louis' video and more details on Raspi in the description box below. In today's test setup, I'm going to use a container-based home assistant with some really simple entities. And on the voice assistant side, I'm going to use this Microsoft Mark II dev kit, which has a fresh new installation. And all I've done so far is I've registered that device on Microsoft's backend and enabled SSH to show you some stuff. In general, you can use any Microsoft voice installation you have. If you do not know how to set it up, I will link a video I've made on that in the description box below. And that's all for the preparation and now let's go! So let's start by taking a look to account Microsoft AI um, where you register all of your installations and devices. And as you can see here, I've registered my developer kit, uh, my dev kit, and it's currently connected. So um, it's running the latest stable version of Microsoft and it's a Mark II platform. But to connect our Microsoft installation to Home Assistant, what we need is a skill. And if you do not know, skills are a way to improve or to add features to your Microsoft Voice Assistant. There are skills that come out of the box from Microsoft, such as date and time and timer skills and all type of um, these typically default skills. But um, you can add more skills um, either developed by Microsoft AI as a company or community um, provided skills. Most skills are um, hosted and can be downloaded on GitHub. So if we um, click in that home user um, web front on the skills, we can see a list of all skills that are installed on my Mark II developer kit at the moment mostly, uh, as it's a fresh installation, um, default skills. And as you can see with that symbol here, uh, that means that you can adjust configuration for these spe uh, special skill. So let's, for example, check the home screen skill. And um, I can see that it applies to my dev kit device. And I can choose some um, wallpaper style. So I can adjust configuration for that home screen skill on uh, the account or home Microsoft web page. So this being said, um, as I would like to install home assistant skill. And as you can see, it's in uh, alphabetical order. Um, I hope so. Yes, it's, I seem so. Um, you can see that there's no home assistant skill. So what we can do now is we can take a look on the left of the navigation and click to Marketplace, Skills. And we can see lots of skills that are available um, for, for installation on your, uh, on your device. So let's search for Home Assistant. And we can see there is a skill available. Click on that. And in general, it's recommended, or it's my personal um, thought, you can hop onto the GitHub repository and check uh, its documentation in more, in more detail. So if we go down a little bit, we can see uh, that following entities are supported. In general, um, Microsoft tries to figure out name based on the friendly name in Home Assistant. So um, entities of type light, switch, and so on are supported at the moment. We can, for example, say turn on office light or turn on entity or turn off entity or ask questions on the state or a specific value of an entity. Um, 
if you would like to adjust and that's one of the benefits having an open source voice assistant if you would like to add or adjust um, how that skill or that intent um, is triggered um, it might be worth a look at the code i'm going to show you this to um, a vocab directory it's language specific so let's check the english version and we can see several files here now let's for example check that turn on intent file and if we take a look there we can see that there are four phrases or four sentences at the moment supported that will trigger the turn on action for any entity such as turn on <laughs> or can you turn on <laughs> please and the benefit is you can adjust these phrases to your personal needs or you can remove a phrase or you can add phrases and um, as normally Mycroft will confirm that it has set a value or it will give feedback spoken feedback and if you'd like to adjust how Mycroft responds when the action has been taken in Home Assistant we can take a look to the dialog folder and again it's language specific DUI stopped for example um, and you can see that there is a variable called def name and is stopped. So if Home Assistant will stop any device, Mycroft will respond by hmm -hmm, device name is stopped. And if you add multiple lines here, um, Mycroft will randomly choose any phrase so you can make it more a little bit more dynamic. So if you would like to uh, add phrases that are being spoken when um, a device is stopped, uh, you can add this in these files. It's time to install that Home Assistant skill and um, there are multiple ways available. Um, if you would like to get more information on how you install skills in Mycroft's Voice Assistant, um, you can jump on to the documentation and you can install by voice or by a command line with a tool called Mycroft MSN. Uh, which is the Microsoft skill manager when I'm right. But please uh, let me uh, cor uh, correct me in the comments if that's wrong. It's not Microsoft's skill manager. Um, oh, I think I'm right. So Microsoft's skill manager seems to be the truth. Um, now let's uh, hop on to our terminal. Um, as you can see, I'm connected to my Mark II developer kit at, at the moment, but all the steps uh, should apply to your local installation as well. So when it comes to skills, these are installed by default under Opt Mycroft Skills. And if we take a look there, we can see lots of directories from all the out-of-the-box um, skills. So, but how do we install our home assistant skill and as i've said we can install it by voice or by command line with that mycroft's uh, skill management tool or we can do the following we can uh, run the mycroft uh, command line interface client and what you can see here now is a simple interface um, where you can interact with your um, with your mycroft installation and um, Whatever I can speak to my uh, Microsoft voice assistant, I can enter as text here, such as say, which is a default skill, hello, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. So, as you can hear, Microsoft is um, greeting you. Um, and we can do something like install skill home assistant. Confirming, shall I install home assistant by Microsoft AI? No. Action cancel. So, um, as you can see, I've entered install skill home assistant and cancel that by speaking no. And um, I can do this by triggering by voice. So let's try this. Hey, Mycroft. Install skill home assistant. Confirming. Shall I install home assistant by Mycroft AI? Yes. So as you can see, I've triggered that command to install the skill by voice, confirmed to install it. And now, as you can see, it's downloading the skill and installing it. Um, it's all Python based, so it's just um, setting up requirements and stuff like that.
Home Assistant is now installed and ready for use. So, looking good. Uh, seems that um, Home Assistant skill is installed. I will leave that command line interface at the mo uh, right now. And uh, if things go right um, in that opt Minecraft skills directory, there should now be a um, Home Assistant directory. So let's check this. And as we can see here, we now have a Home Assistant Minecraft AI directory, which was not there in the first try. So now the skill is installed and we can switch once again back to our browser and uh, take a look to Home Minecraft AI. If I go back to the skills um, tab, as previously I've seen now my list of locally uh, installed uh, skills. So that's in synchronization with my local installation and um, the backend uh, hosted by Minecraft. And as you can see now, in addition to the, to, to the first try, we now have a Home Assistant tab or entry or whatever. Uh, and let's open this one. And as it said, it's, it applies to my uh, dev kit installation. And now I can configure my Home Assistant IP address or host number and a long-lived access token and specify of using SSL or not. So now it's easy for me to adjust and configure values for my Home Assistant installation. Now the skill is installed. We know how to configure IP, port and token. And now it's time to jump on to Home Assistant and yeah, create a long-lived access token, which can be entered in the configuration here. So for that, I've entered my um, home assistant installation and let's click on my username. Scroll down to the bottom of that page and here we can see that long-lived access token and create a new token. We can give it a name such as Minecraft. I'm so creative. So um, now let's copy that token because you will not see this token again. So it's important uh, to check that it's um, copied, completed, and not just parts of it as I've made in my first test. <laughs> so uh, be sure you copy the, co the complete uh, token. And um, once we have done that, you can see now that there is a Minecraft token created. So now we have that token. Let's go to um, Home Minecraft's account management and uh, open the skill configuration for Home Assistant. Uh, you enter your DNS name or your IP address of that uh, Home Assistant installation. And let's enter the, the recently created token. Be sure you adjust the port if it's not the default value. And once we have done that, let's click the Save button. What we can do now is we can force uh, the Minecraft installation to update that configuration by running f the following voice command. Hey, Minecraft, update configuration. Configuration hasn't changed. So I've been too slow. Uh, that change in configuration has already been synced between Minecraft's backend and my um, installation. So this should be all on the configuration side. So now let's go back to our Home Assistant dashboard and um, let's see that overview. And I re uh, created really just two simple helpers. Um, so let's give these two a try. Hey, Mycroft, turn on light. Turn on light. So this works really well. Um, hey, Mycroft, turn on toaster. Yeah, great. Turn on toaster. Um, hey, Mycroft, turn off light. Turn light off. Please think that it's the friendly name that is uh, figured out uh, by uh, Minecraft to find uh, the entity you would like to change or request a value from. So 
this really works. And I've, in addition, created a simple um, automation. So let's go to our settings and automations. I've created a that YouTube demo, which was fired um, some minutes ago while doing my testing. So let's give this one a try. Hey, Mycroft, activate automation YouTube demo. Yeah, so timestamp has been updated. So this automation... YouTube demo was activated. Yeah, and the, the spoken response to confirmation that this um, automation has been triggered uh, was spoken by Mycroft. So as you can see, you can trigger automations. You can trigger entities by friendly name. Yeah, and I hope this video helps you by uh, setting up um, your Microsoft Voice Assistant in combination with Home Assistant. In case you like that video, please um, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Um, thanks in general for watching my videos, for commenting. That is really highly appreciated. And if you haven't done already and like that type of videos I'm making for you, please uh, think about uh, subscribing to my channel, hitting that notification bell. Yeah, that's it for today. Thanks you for watching my videos and uh, have a nice day and bye bye.